Okay, uh, hello everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Mariana Martinez Peck, and I will be talking about a high charts uh, wrapper that we did for for Smalltalk. Um, a quick intro about myself. I am a software engineer who later got a PhD in computer science. Uh, as my time allows me, I try to contribute to different kind of open source projects. Um, for paying the bills, I have different jobs in the industry and since a couple of years now I'm working as an independent software uh, developer. Uh, sorry. Um, <coughs> So this talk, uh, sorry, HiCharts, uh, it's a JavaScript library. In fact, it's a family of libraries uh, for JavaScript, which uh, they have three big products, is HiCharts, HiStock, and HiMaps. And they also have a few other products. Um, and that's it's what I'm going to show you and how we use this uh, from C side. Uh, of course, uh, as you can imagine, JavaScript and, and Smalltalk are quite different. Um, so if, if you see how CSI uh, would do, I mean, on the left side, this is what uh, JavaScript looks like when you create a chart with high charts. You can see it's, it's pretty easy, um, if you see. But if we would need to do this on CSI, I mean, just uh, as it comes, it would be something like this. Uh, just HTML a script, and you paste the whole script, which you will have to do a quote every script. Um, of course, uh, this is a, a real pain. Since I promise us to have reusable components, and so if I mean, if we do HTML script and we put that to string, oh. Uh, sorry. What we have is actually string oriented programming. Um, and I guess nobody here wants that. <coughs> the second problem was that um, with Faro, we are used to, to use that as our environment for developing. So we want to look senders, implementers, check the, check the source of class, etc. Um, so, <coughs> with those things in mind, um, I think that we actually, Maxi and, uh, and Gabi, started with the idea of a wrapper for, for Seaside. Uh, I don't talk to them why it was the reason, but I hope it was the ones I just mentioned. Uh, but the idea is to have a wrapper uh, from Seaside. And that's uh, you can see it's now on GitGab, uh, the source. So I will start with uh, showing, showing it. Oh, okay. So this is um, what I told you. This is High Charts, the, the website. You can see the all the product I was just uh, mentioning. You can see they have uh, plenty of demos so that you get an idea of what you will be able to do with this library. Uh, all this is what is the high chart uh, library itself. Uh, there are plenty. Then you can see high stock. Um, this is for financial applications. Uh, and then finally you have uh, Hide maps. <clears throat> but I guess with these examples, you get an idea of, of the things you would be able to do. And if you can do it in high charts, we, you should be able to do it in a small talk too with this side. So <clears throat> I took just one random example. It's a, a simple uh, bar chart, which is this historical war population by region. And if it's an official example, here you can see the GS Fidel from this chart. Um, you can see the code here and the result. Um, we have uh, some demo that came with a wrapper. I am running this from Faro. 
you will see now. And you can see here, I don't know, some dummy examples uh, we built. And as you can see, this example on the top, it's exactly the same uh, as this one. It's just smaller, but it's the same, the same chart. And so, <coughs> of course, this is rendered from CSI. And so I will show you uh, what this wrapper is about. Um, <coughs> OK. This is part of, of the package high charge demo, so you can see it yourself. And basically, what we do is that we get a canvas, a CSI canvas, and then we can say high charts and get uh, a new JavaScript chart. And then we can start setting everything. Uh, until at the end, what we simply do is HTML, div, script, and we pass the chart object. So how this works, um, let's start with the basic. We'll put a halt to explain. And, and I will put another one at the end. OK, now I will refresh. <clears throat> OK, so if you check what chart it's, it's actually uh, an object called high chart, which if we browse uh, its hierarchy, you will see its subclass of high charts component, which is all of all of our high charts inherit from this generic one. And then it, it extends from GS object. GS object is the minimal interface CSI provides you for JavaScript objects, and it provides some uh, basic functionality which you can see here, like converting to JavaScript and, and so on. <clears throat> so as this is a JavaScript uh, object, uh, what it happens is that at the end, let's say, now I proceed, I am at I am the end of the chart. Uh, this chart object has a, an instance variable which we call configuration options. This is a dictionary where inside we have some other JavaScript object, but it doesn't matter. What I want to show you is that if I take this chart and I said JavaScript um, restring, thank you. So, uh, uh, okay, sorry, that's JavaScript. So here I get the JavaScript from that GS object and, okay, it looks ugly, but if I, I don't know, I open Atom and then highlight and you can see JavaScript. Yes, and I prettify this. Okay, there you see it's practically the same as the, as the original uh, JavaScript code. <coughs> now, uh, Getting uh, a little deeper on, on how it works, I will refresh again. And I will step over, for example, title. If we see how title is implemented, it looks like high chart implements title. And what it does is check on the configuration options. If title is absent, then instantiate a high chart title. So if we then proceed with that, and then we get into text, we see the high charts title, understand text, which puts the regular string. It's, it's, it's a primitive object, and it's not an, an option that has more options. Uh, we can proceed. I will just do two lines, don't worry. Uh, chart, it's implemented as similarly where well, it's confusion as chart. If absent, create this. And as you can guess now, that object, high charge charts, understand type, and so on. And so <clears throat> if we browse, let's say we browse high charge chart, for example, we can see here all the things it supports, high charge charts. And if we see high chart, which was the original, you can see, again, here, all the things it supports. 
Um, <clears throat> something else interesting is that if you see, we have uh, comments for what that option does. You see, for example, here type is the default series type for the chart. Can be any of the type, etc. So, <clears throat> and okay, the rest. Uh, I don't want to get too much details on the rest, but you can quickly see how you can uh, continue setting the values uh, for the rest of the stuff. Uh, and what is important for you uh, to know, or, I mean, what I think it's funny to comment, is how this works is that uh, high charts provide what is called an API reference. And from here, you can see all of the options it ex exist. So for, uh, for example, high chart, chart, then you can get chart. Uh, from chart, you can have all these options. And then for events, you can have these options and so on. So for example, if we check uh, our high chart chart, for example, this one, and we browse, you can see the methods align ticks, animation, and if we check here, you can see align ticks, animation. Um, <clears throat> if we check the comments of align tick, let's say, okay, it says when using multiple axes, the tick, uh, when using multiple axes. So, uh, what I wanted to say is that what we do is we auto generate the wrapper using parsing this API website. Um, it's very nice because the, the export of the HTML or the XML, they have nice, uh, you know, CSS classes or IDs for the, for the parameter, for the name of the selector, for the comment, etc. So that al allows us to, to not, not have to guess, but automatically build the wrapper. So you check uh, actually the name of the package, you will see it's high chance auto generated. And all these classes and all the methods are in, you know, auto-generated. And then we have the same for um, high stock. OK? I hope it's clear. That was the basic demo. Um, so <coughs> about the code generation, uh, it's almost automatic. There are a few. <coughs> Little details that need some manual uh, intervention, but we are fixing that soon. Uh, currently, we support high charts and high stock. Uh -huh. High maps should be able because I made a, a big refactor to support all of the products, but I never had the time nor the need to, for high maps, but should work. Um, yeah, we generate tests also and etc. <coughs> okay, so. For the next slides, uh, I need to explain a little bit. I will use Q uh, for the examples I will show. Q is a financial product I am developing for a client. Uh, it's uh, a software for, for uh, professional investors, uh, which provides research, portfolio management, uh, robot trading, etc. Uh, and so we have plenty of charts uh, and some cool ideas that I think is worth sharing. Okay, so now I would like to show you some examples of the charts uh, I built, just for, so that you are aware of things that could be easily be built. I have here already some of our reports. This is Q, uh, I have opened a company report on Coca-Cola. And uh, here, okay, this is a simple chart uh, which uses uh, artificial neural networks to predict and compare the, the future of stocks. Um, this is a, a chart with 3D, which we can drag and drop, uh, etc. This is also a neural network thingy. Uh, I don't know, this rolling price returns, uh, some commodities analysis. Uh, again, this is uh, artificial network two, uh, output versus expected, uh, the U.S. economy, so on. Let's see another one. This is for Apple. 
This is again a kind of price analysis chart. Uh, some something else. You can see we have themes. You can see we, we just for the purpose of demo, I have applied different themes for the different charts. Um, uh, here you have a stacked chart with a, an area on the back. Uh, Okay, Microsoft, this is another report from Microsoft. Here you can see how the levels, for example, the numbers are on the bars itself. Uh, little tweaks that you can do. Uh, yeah, I think that's all. Yeah. And last one. Uh, yeah, now sure there is something new. And uh, this one looks cool. Uh, personalities. Okay, that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to show so that you know you could build uh, nice looking charts. Uh, they are not difficult to do. Um, <clears throat> then uh, the second thing that I wanted to. Yeah, I know you're watching my notes, but <laughs> I don't want to zoom out and zoom in. <clears throat> so. Um, the next thing that I wanted to show are some ideas that, that I did uh, which uh, I think could be reused and they are uh, nice. For example, <clears throat> in this case uh, I have a, a chart. Um, uh, well, basically I can, this is about the library, it's not something we did. Uh, maybe we did some customization, but for example you can zoom. Uh, you can move on history, you can change the range, how much you want to see. Uh, I mean, all kind of controls you can, <coughs> you can hide or add a series again. That something we did is that <coughs> we provide what we call chart decorations. Uh, which basically it's have a bunch, I mean, remember I told you that the main goal was to reuse code. So <clears throat> what we, one of the things we did is that we have all these, uh, what we call um, decorations, like, I don't know, I want a compacted navigator, which is um, the thing here below, I want a very thin one, or maybe I want, I don't know, uh, axis levels with w titles in white. Um, so you see now these things look on white, or maybe I, can, I want to change the columns opacity. Uh, there are, I mean, million of uh, possible settings which, uh, tool uh, for example, if we want to share the tooltip instead of separated. And instead of a per series, you know, we show all the series on the same tooltip. So there are plenty of configura configurations that are even user defined. And if you see how that's implemented, um, it basically rules. Uh, we have a rule engine, and these are rules that look. Uh, it's a small talk code. Um, we use our wrap, it uses the very same code I show you on the first example, but it's just a, a piece. I mean, it's a piece of code where you get the chart as argument, and then you can set everything as, you know, as we did uh, for this example, remember? So it's practically the same. It's, you just get a chart, and then you can do uh, whatever you want. Uh, for example, you know, column stacked, it does charts, plot options, column stacked, normal, and things like that. So the user can, I mean, we supply some, but the user also can customize their own settings. Uh, in, in addition, we provide, let's say we are prototyping, and so we also allow, for example, uh, ad hoc decoration. So I can say, okay, uh, I can say 
chart subtitle uh, hello and I can apply that I think I need to refresh and some purpose this and you can see hello here this is the subtitle of a high chart so you can prototype quickly uh, your chart and something very nice is that well we can trigger full screen uh, well here in this small screen it doesn't make sense but f most financial people use two monitors like this so it's it's very nice when you can see a really large chart in full screen it's, it's really nice <coughs> we can also see the generated JavaScript code uh, here but it's usually not cool. But I added a GS fiddle button. So this creates a fiddle automatically, which uh, with our JavaScript of our chart, it will take a little bit because it's really heavy. I mean, the series are really heavy. If you look at this, it's, it's uh, a million of points series. So it's really heavy. <clears throat> but this is very nice because it allows us to ask on a stack overflow in two seconds. I just get GS Fidel, now I put save, and I have everything to ask on a stack overflow. Um, so here I, I put more or less, you know, the basic layout that we use on our application with some basic CSS that we also, so that we, I put the exact same versions of our libraries, so it's exact same situation that it's, it's very nice for debugging or prototyping or asking for help. And something which I think it's nice also that I added is um, to load, I mean, charts are really fast in general, but sometimes uh, what is slow is to retrieve the data. Um, maybe you need a, a million data points of prices, etc. So what I did is uh, pay attention when I will refresh now. You see, loading for server. So what I did is um, uh, I was able to, it's very simple, but uh, I think it's, it's uh, nice. Basically, <coughs> um, what I did is that if my chart, if I want to be Ajax, uh, what I do, look at here, what I say, yes, if Ajax load is true, what I do is I just create the chart, I say, okay, I am loading, and then I append this JavaScript code here, and what, the, what this method does, It's to do a get JSON, which is you know similar like a, like an Ajax. It's an asynchronous call, and on the response, I just value. Uh, it's I receive a block, which the blocks would give me the data. So I value this on the callback, and then I make the the serialization to JSON. And, and on the on success of the get JSON. What I do is I get my high charge object and then I iter iterate each series and I set the data. So set data uh, with what I just uh, got from my chance get chase and response. And finally I redraw and hide the, the loading. So I think that's it's pretty, it's pretty nice. Uh, it helps us a lot. Uh, and uh, yeah, and note in this case, for example, I am using a research chart class. So again, I am reusing code. Yeah. I'm sorry, is that the way that high charts recommend um, to update data? Yes, they they support a few methods. Like uh, if you already have it on the DOM, uh, you can get it from the DOM. Uh, they they allow Ajax, and they also allow, you know, if you have the URL, a REST URL, it's much easier. But in my case, since I am inside CSI, 
I need to do the get JSON and the callback. Otherwise, I, I could provide a REST API, and, which would work too. But, but yeah, in general, doing uh, Ajax load is usually better than, than do it on the DOM. And they also have some better things, uh, more advanced ways of getting the data. Uh, but I never, I was not able yet to, to try that. Uh, okay, I am almost done. Uh, it looks very cool, yeah. Uh, but I, there are some problems. Uh, the biggest one I, I have found, at least for, for my company, for my client, is that the user, uh, he sees a chart on GS Fidel or in the HHS website, and then they want to convert that to our small talk code or to a wrapper. And sometimes it's not a one-to-one -one mapping and a very, it's not a walk in the park. Um, so for what I would love is to have a, a converter from JavaScript to our uh, small talk syntax. Uh, I think that it's uh, the most problem, I mean the biggest problem I am finding now. So when that happens, usually one of us or one of the developers helps a little bit the user to convert the path he couldn't uh, to our API. Um, then we want to, I would like to support modules. I just have like a separate features which are modules, which were very cool things like GPU. So they use WebGL for, for rendering when you have million of points and things like that. We are not yet using that. Um, we need to improve our auto generation tool because Right now, it depends a lot on the API website. So when they change the API website, uh, we screw it a bit. So we need, to, we need to improve that. And I guess we would like high maps. But I doubt that would happen unless someone needs it. Uh, OK. That's all I wanted to show. Uh, I don't know if you have questions. Mm. Okay. Thank you.